everybody. Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, we're going to be talking about how I came up with my DIY mods. So I did an episode previously about my DIY mods and I kind of talked everybody through like what they were and, you know, just kind of did almost a walk around of the truck showing some of the DIY mods. Since that video, I've actually made a couple of more uh modifications that I think are pretty impressive anyways. I they're I just think they're cool. Um, but so I wanted to kind of talk through today, not so much what the mods are, although I will talk a little bit about those, but more like how I come up with the ideas for it, how I, you know, what instigates, you know, me to kind of think about creating something on my own. Like why do I create a do-it-yourself mod on my own? Um, if you're new to the channel, my name's Fletch. This is All Things Overlanding. Of course, I talk about overlanding stuff. I also do a lot of Xterra content, gear reviews, um, overlanding trip reports, things like that. So anything to do with camping, outdoors, overlanding, Xterra, vehicle modifications. So again, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you. And I would love it if you guys comment down below and just kind of let me know what you're thinking. Let me know your opinions on things. And I'll reply to every comment. So uh, thanks again for stopping by. So before we dive into the episode, I did want to touch briefly on my featured partners. Uh, Overland Addict, great, great shop based in the Midwest. Um, he sells pretty much everything to do with overlanding. So if you click on that link below in the description, that will take you to the website where you can kind of check out everything that he's got. Um, let him know that I sent you and uh, he'll hook you up. And then uh, Last US Bags, an another awesome uh, sort of out west uh, company in the US here, uh, but they make overlanding bags so everything from tool rolls to stuff for your cooking gear to they have like a garb bag slash trasheroo which is really awesome um, so they make tons of really cool uh, high quality overlanding gear so definitely check them out as well um, then more expo that thing is coming up in february again i will be there it's going to be a lot of fun there's going to be a ton of vendors it's going to be amazing so i'm super excited about that click the link below to get your tickets um, and then last but not least northology adventures uh awesome overlanding digital magazine, totally free. So click through that link, go to their website, sign up for the, the, the digital magazine, and you'll start getting that every month. Um, so without further ado though, let's dive into the video. All right, guys, so as I mentioned on today's episode, I'm talking about kind of like where the ideas come from, sort of how I, you know, what what has spurred me in the past to come up with all the DIY uh, ideas that I've come up with and, you know, how did I execute them? You know, what resources did I use when I was, you know, researching them and planning them? And what are some examples of those do-it-yourself mods and, and kind of how they came to be, right? So they say that, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Like we've all heard that phrase before, that quote. Um, and I think that's true. And that, that applies to me too. Like that's kind of where it comes from. So my approach is always kind of based on solving a problem, right? Like something comes up, I need to solve that problem. And it's usually influenced by two different factors for me. So one of those factors is price, right? So let me give you an example. Um, you know, there are a lot of companies, and again, I'm not poo-pooing on any of these companies at all because they make great amazing stuff and if you've got the money and you can just afford to like splurge and spend the money to buy these solutions um just straight out of the box they're great right um, but like i'm thinking of like those like built-in sort of like floor systems like a goose gear kind of like a you know a, a custom made for your vehicle like storage solution that basically like raises your floor gives you some drawers and stuff to choose from some ways to attach things to it Again, those are amazing, right? But they're thousands of dollars sometimes. Um, so like in my case, right? Like I chose not to spend the big money to buy like some sort of a drawer system or some sort of a custom solution for the Xterra that, you know, you have to buy from someone else. And so I made a drawer system, right? Um, so that's kind of my example there. So I look at the price, right? So if it's going to cost me hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars to buy something, then oftentimes I will say, okay, what's the real problem that I'm trying to solve for? What are the solutions that exist out there and what do they do? Like, right, like what are the benefits, right? So let's say that goose gear thing that I was talking about, like it's already pre-made. You can just slap it into your vehicle. Like there are definitely some benefits there, right? But, it, and if it was like 200 bucks, 300 bucks for one of those, sure, all day long. It, it's cheaper to do that than it is to make it. 
Um, however, like in the case of like my do-it-yourself rooftop tent, when you look at clamshell style, um, gas strut opening, hard shell rooftop tents, you're talking at least, you know, I mean, even with the new GoFast Campers uh, ultralight deal that they've got, at least $1,200 without a mattress, right? But most of the time you're talking two to $3,000 for something like that. So in my case, I was like, man, I can spend two to 300 bucks and I can make something that's decent, right? And, and that would do the job. Um, so that was kind of what spurred me to do that. So price is one part of it. The second part of it though is customizability. So again, with like, yeah, and I'm not, <laughs> it sounds like I'm like just crapping all over the, the goose gear thing. Those things are, they're awesome, right? I'm just poor. So I'm not gonna spend that kind of money, but like, you know, they're also fixed, right? So like you're gonna spend X, Y, Z dollars on this solution, this system, and you get what you get, right? Like they've come up with a solution for X number of vehicles, right? And so you have it, everybody else has it. It's all the same for everybody. If you have different challenges or different problems or different types of gear, or if you're a, you wanna sleep in the truck versus maybe like in a rooftop tent, you can have like one solution, right? Or maybe you have a couple, but you're fixed in the solutions that you've got. So the customizability is a big part for me as well. Um, and when you do a DIY solution, right? Like that gives you the ability to customize it. It gives you the ability to change it up, to make it fit your your problem and, and solve that problem. Um, so again, that's those are the two things, price and customizability. Those are the two things that I look at when I am thinking about doing a DIY mod. So let me give you some examples. Um, Again, if you follow the channel for any period of time, you've probably heard about some of these things, but again, I'm gonna kind of talk about it from a problem standpoint and then how that DIY mod solved that problem. Um, and the intention of this is, again, not to harp on the stuff that I've done. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I just kind of want to like show you guys some examples of like, what was the problem that I faced as a new overlander, right? Like, I mean, I've only been doing this for a few years, but so I would run into a problem and then I would say, man, okay, what are the solutions? What can I buy, right? And I would look at it and I'd say, oh my God, a rooftop tent is 2,500 bucks. Or I found this forum and this Facebook group and people are making their own and they're spending two to $500. Okay, that's interesting. Let me do some research on that. Let me, let me figure that out. And then when I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I've done the research. I understand it. I think I have the capabilities or I have the resources to do that. I'm gonna create my own solution, right? Um, so speaking of that, let's start with the DIY rooftop tent. So again, not to be a hypocrite at all here, I did build a DIY rooftop tent. Um, when I first built it, it was terrible. It was not great. Um, I didn't really do what anybody else was doing. I, I'm one of those people that hates to have the same thing as anyone else, but honestly, a lot of the times that's better. So while I kind of like to have something that's super unique for me, I don't necessarily encourage people to do that. Like it doesn't necessarily make sense. If there are people on the, you know, the DIY rooftop tent Facebook group and there's a bunch of people that have done the same thing and it makes sense and it works for them and it solves their problems, then you don't have to just like go way out of your way to come up with something crazy and just impractical and stupid just to be different. Whereas I do that stuff all the time because I'm an idiot, right? So, so take that with a grain of salt, but um, in my case, I built a DIY rooftop tent that was essentially a wooden box. It was about seven feet long. It was about three feet across. Um, it had a nice little lip on it, so we solved the problem of water getting in, right? And I put gas struts on it, and it opened long ways. So it opened basically like this. Sorry, if you're looking in the, the video right now and not on the podcast, you'll see this big, perfectly rectangular burn mark on my arm. That was from another DIY mod that I will talk about here in a second, but I realized as I held my hands up that... Uh, you can see that, and it's not like leprosy or anything. It's a burn from working on my own DIY mods. So anyways, disregard. Um, but so my rooftop tent was, basically my intention was to do as little work as possible and make it as replicatable and replaceable as possible. So it was a long box that opened long ways, like a coffin, basically. That's what I called it, was like the coffin. And then I had a $38, uh, backpackers tent that basically attached to the roof so when you opened it like the tent would lift up with the roof and it was not great it was I you know it was not a place where I wanted to be it was a place where I slept probably six seven eight nights and it was okay right like it was tiny and it was claustrophobic and it you know you have to unzip this stupid bug net to get in and out and it just it kind of sagged in the middle and it just wasn't great 
Um, but it solved a problem and it, and it taught me a lot. And I, I learned a little bit about fabrication and I learned some, you know, that I, the opening it long ways was really bad because then again, you just, it's like climbing into a coffin. Um, so I started to modify that and change it so that it would open, um, more like regular, <laughs> more like other existing rooftop tents. Uh, but by the time I started to do that, then I realized I had to sew this super heavy duty, uh, canvas, waterproof canvas that I bought and I didn't have the equipment for that. And so that's where I kind of hit a wall, right? I was like, oh man, okay, I haven't spent much money, but this solution just doesn't really make sense. And so I bought a rooftop tent. So in that case, right, for me, it made sense to spend $900 on an, an existing pre-made rooftop tent versus spending more money where I was about $300 into my DIY rooftop tent at that point. And I was like, Ugh, I'm going to have to pay a seamstress or something to sew this thing. I don't, it's going to be at least a few hundred bucks to do that. And you know what I mean? I, I get that point where I'm like, the money started to weigh itself out. And the wife also was like, this is really cool, but you should just get a good one so that I can sleep in it and we could like enjoy it without it being like a coffin. Um, but so again, the, the problem was that rooftop tents were really expensive. I tried to solve it by doing a DIY thing. I learned a ton from it. There was value in it. Um, for the channel, you know, it was great content. Like people were interested in it. So, and I enjoyed making it. Um, so that was great. Um, but then in the end, it ended up weighing out where I was like, you know what? It does make sense because of the amount that I go camping, the number of times that I go camping to buy a rooftop tent. Um, so DIY is not always the answer either, right? Um, but so kind of getting back to that goose gear example from the beginning. So in the back of the truck, in the back of the Xterra, it has this awesome sort of like tie down utilitrack system. Um, I used to use Plano crates and like swap things in and out and stack things up and but it was really inefficient and it was a pain and I had to re you know restack those crates every time and if I went camping then I'd have to go find the crates and maybe that has winter stuff in it and summer stuff and I have to constantly be going through it would take me hours just to kind of like sit down plan for the trip put the stuff in the in the right crates get the old stuff that I don't need out and into somewhere else store it somewhere else um, and so I decided for me because of the number of times that I go camping slash overlanding that I would just build like a semi-permanent drawer system and attach it to that utilitrack system. Um, and again, I looked at pre-made solutions. There aren't a ton for Xterras, but so you kind of get into like, you can buy piecemeal stuff. Um, but honestly, most people are doing DIY stuff. And again, I wanted to keep the cost super low, right? Because price is a big concern for me. So I have a buddy who's a really talented woodworker. I mentioned the project to him and he was excited to do it. And he was like, yeah, man, give me some beer and, and we'll call it even. Um, so I did that and he helped me build this awesome drawer system. I've had it for like a year, year and a half now and it's still going strong. It's great. And like, I don't have to unpack it and repack it. So it solves a lot of problems for me, right? It saves me a ton of time when it comes to getting ready to hit the road. So like if today's Thursday, if tomorrow, Friday, my wife says, you can go camping this weekend. I don't have to be like, oh crap. Okay, where's all my stuff? What crate, what Plano crate is it in? Is it in the garage? Is it in the basement? Like, where did I put that stuff? Where's my hat? Where's my gloves? Like, it's winter time, right? Um, so by having all that stuff and just knowing exactly what's in the drawers, right? I've got some cooking stuff. My grill is always in there. My stove is always in there. My fridge freezer is permanently in the truck. Um, my chainsaw is stored in the truck. My radios are stored in the truck. Like, I already know that I have you know, uh, articles one, two, three, four, and five in the truck from the get-go. So all I have to worry about is like food, um, my sleeping bag and all that stuff is in the rooftop tent, so I don't need any of that either. My wool blanket is always stored behind my back seat, so I have that. Um, so thanks to the DIY drawers, I have like a more permanent solution that saves me a ton of time with packing and just thought, and it makes going on trips easier, right? So that was my problem was, how do I reduce the amount of time? How do I make it so I can go on more trips? And how do I just make it more efficient and more fun to go on trips, right? And so the solution was the DIY drawers. Um, another one that's new that I have not released the video on yet, but God, I'm so excited to share with you guys because I just literally strapped it to the truck today is my DIY roof rack. So I basically, when I got my bought rooftop tent, I was excited because I had a trip to the Upper Peninsula. I was driving 11 hours away and I had like a week and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to strap this thing to the stock roof rack and I'm just going to go. And when I did that, I was trying to get my awning on, but it, there wasn't any way to attach it, right? Like a stock Xterra roof rack just doesn't have a lot of functionality. It doesn't have a lot of ways to attach things to it. And I just couldn't figure out a way. So I just went without my awning. Um, and now it's been a month and a half or two months since that event. And I'm still sitting here. I'm like, okay, wait, there's no way to mount this stupid awning. 
Um, so I came up with the idea. I'd seen like one or two, but there's not much out there. Um, a couple of videos on YouTube about using Unistrut for a roof rack. And so I looked into it, I did some research, I learned a lot about it, and I ended up, I just completed my own Unistrut based roof rack roof rack. So it goes on top of my stock Xterra roof rack. Um, and again, I'm gonna have a really comprehensive video coming on that here soon. Um, but it is, it's so cool. Like I mounted it up tonight. It, I extended it basically past the stock roof rack of the Xterra. Um, I strapped my awning to it. I'm gonna attach, I made a way to attach my uh, traction boards to it. So they're gonna be up there as well, out of the way, out, out of the truck, because currently they're inside the truck. I've got them bungee cord to the roof, basically, which is blocking my view and taking up room, and it's just stupid, right? Like, I can't get to them. It's a pain in the butt. Um, so I've got a solution for that. And then the, the nice thing, too, is the way I built it is I specifically built it to allow for the rooftop tent to use its actual mounting bits that came with it. Before, I was just using giant U-bolts and just strapping it to the roof rack. But now I'm actually gonna use the, the mounting solution that comes with the tent, which makes it more adjustable, makes it easier to get on and off. Um, I'm gonna leave mine on full time, but if you are one of those people that doesn't wanna leave it on, um, it does prevent me from getting my truck in the garage, um, then you can you know use the existing uh, T-channel that it's got on it and you can mount it with this solution. So again, that was what was the problem, right? I have a rooftop tent and I have an awning and I have traction boards, but I on the Xterra stock, I didn't have a way to do that. So that was the problem in my customization to be able to do it. And then price too, right? So if you're familiar with Xterra's at all, or probably pretty much any vehicle, right? If you're gonna buy a like fab shop made roof rack, I mean, we're talking, I don't know, 500 bucks to 1500 bucks, somewhere in that ballpark, like it's expensive. Those things, and they're awesome. Again, like I'm not saying that my Unistrut based roof rack is like crazy amazing quality and it's gonna like supplant like a, a Dep Hep or a Hefty Fab or anything like that. Like, don't get me wrong, if you've got the money and you want that like really hefty solution, do it, right? But for me, I'm like, I spent about a hundred bucks on the Unistrut that I used for this roof rack. It elevated the rooftop tent about an inch and a half or two. So that's all as it goes up an inch and a half or two. But again, it allows me to mount my awning. It it's, I'm just super excited about it and I think it's really cool looking and I love that it's like something that I just made in my garage for a hundred bucks. Um, so again, video coming on that, but it solved a problem. It solved the price point thing, hundred bucks versus 1500 bucks. I'll take it any day and it's customized for exactly what I need, right? Um, <clears throat> another example is like my DIY CB mount. Um, a lot of people on Xterra's mount them down below the center console because there's kind of an empty space down there. And so I kind of looked at it and I was like, yeah, that's fine, but it's low and you can't really see the CB and like then your your you know your mic is way down low and you're raising it up here. And at the same time I was looking at my the sort of the top center console that runs along the roof and there's a sunglass holder and I'm like I'm I wear regular glasses. So if you're watching on YouTube, you know this. I wear regular glasses. So I don't have sunglasses. So I never use the sunglass holder. And I was looking at it and I was like, you know what? Let me get that, the U-shaped bracket that is meant to hold the CB up. And I got it and I held it up to it. And I'm like, it's like exactly like a half an inch in from the outsides of the uh, glasses holder. So I was like, you know what? I have a Dremel and I can just put this, cut little lines in it basically and then drop that U-bolt down through and then really quickly just attach the CB, run all the cords up through the headliner and I have it right up here where I can get to it really easily, right? It's up at the top. I can see it because it's right at eye level. Like, it's out of the way. It's it's not taking up any room. I don't have to drag it across all my cords and stuff that I'm charging down here. Um, so, again, it didn't really cost me anything. I used the stock mounting stuff that came with my unit and radio, CB. And, uh, and it was customized for my needs. So, for me, it made perfect sense. Um, and then, you know, like the last couple of little things here that I've done that, again, I won't harp on too much, but like in the rear of the Xterra, it, the hatch opens upwards, right? Like a, most SUVs, um, but it has sort of a plastic cover that goes over the rear hatch. And I used quick fists, basically. I said, you know what? I want to be able to take my ax. I want to be able to take a shovel, but I, I don't want to have to store it up on the roof. I don't want it to get rusty. I want it to be inside the truck where it's protected. Again, I don't want to spend a million bucks, right? Like I want it to be cheap. I don't want to buy a bunch of super expensive custom Molly panels that go over the rear windows and do all that kind of stuff. Um, so I literally spent probably like 50 bucks on quick fists and then took the plastic down, figured out where I wanted everything to lay out. And then I drilled holes through it and put bolts through and nuts and washers. 
and attach the quick fists. And now I've got a shovel, an axe, a knife, and a flashlight, and they all attach to that back hatch. So when I close it, they're gone. When I open it up, they're right above my head. I can get to whatever I need. Cost me almost nothing, solved a problem, um, and it's awesome. And then last, the Viair mount that I made. Um, again, not at all to toot my own horn. There's literally nothing special about this, except I will say I'm pretty proud of the fact that I used like the universal UAE um, electrical plugs. So when you buy a Viair 88P, which is my compressor that I have, it's a little guy, it's about 50, 60 bucks, so it's really inexpensive, so it definitely meets that price criteria. Um, it comes with basically alligator clips because the intention is for it to be portable, right? Like you can you keep it in a bag, you get to where you want to air up or whatever, and you take it out and you undo all these things and you attach it to your battery and then you air up your tires, right? And you go around, you do one at a time, you, you air up. I essentially wanted to have onboard air because I'm always going to be airing up my truck, right? So I wanted it to be mounted, but I didn't want to be limited to only having it like hardwired to my battery. I wanted to be able to, if I needed to, like... Not so much for off-roading, although like if somebody else ever needed to use it, it is kind of nice that I can pull it out. And basically what I did was I used that universal plug. So there is a permanently mounted universal plug inside my truck that runs straight to the battery. And I can take the Viair and I can plug it into that. And then I can just use my extension. I have an extension hose for it and it'll reach all the tires on my truck. So I don't have to take it out. I use a big quick fist to hold it to the side of the truck. And I, uh, you know, air up the tires. I move it around. I attach it to one tire. I let it go till it gets to 33, 35 pounds. I switch it to the next tire and I, I just move through them, right? But if someone else needed it or I needed to, I needed to go somewhere and someone else was like, can you leave your air compressor? I can unplug it from that plug. And then I took the alligator clips that came with it and I rewired them to another universal plug. So the same thing applies, right? You just take the universal plug from the compressor and plug it into the alligator clips, you hand it to someone, they can plug it into their truck via the battery and they can use it. Or I could take it out and use it for my wife's car. Or I could take it across the street to the neighbors who have a flat tire and I can air up their tire. So it gives me flexibility, right? I hardly ever take it out to be honest, but I just like having options. And so again, it didn't cost a whole lot. I just kind of, I bought a couple little, you know, universal connectors for it. Maybe spent 10, 15, 20 bucks on that stuff. And I, I kept the stock functionality, but I cut the wires and I wired the alligators up to the universal plug too to give me those options. Um, but it solved a problem, didn't cost a ton, and it was customized for exactly what I needed. Um, so those are some examples of how you can come up with ideas for do-it-yourself mods. Next, I want to talk about resources, right? So, and this may sound familiar again, if you've watched a lot of my stuff, it's funny because the resources don't really change a whole lot, whether you're researching like a trip that you want to plan or modifications that you want to make or what vehicle you want to get. Like a lot of those resources are the same. Um, however, you know, obviously you're looking for different stuff. So you'll use them slightly in a little bit different way. Um, but I'm going to kind of move fast through this because, again, if you've watched any of my stuff, you know a lot of these things already. So um, when it comes to DIY mods, definitely, definitely, definitely. Look at your friends list, right? Like figure out who your talented friends are and figure out how you can suck up to them and make friends with them and convince them to help you with stuff at a reduced or free rate. Um, so again, my, my buddy that's a super talented woodworker, love the guy to death. He's a fantastic guy and he is amazingly talented. Like he sells some of his stuff for like thousands of dollars because he makes this amazing high quality stuff. And his house, you guys should see his house. Like it's just like custom closet, custom pantry, custom, like everything's custom, right? Because he enjoys it and he's good at it. Um, but my things, you know, the way that I actually found that worked best was, you know, I tried to bribe him and he's like, yeah, sure. You can give me some beer, but like Really, the way that I found that went to his heart was uh, to like present him with really interesting, challenging projects that he's never done before. Like as soon as I said, okay, check it. I want you to make me a coffin-like box that I'm going to put on top of my roof of my truck and I'm going to sleep in it. He was like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Yeah, let's do that. And it has to be waterproof and it has to be this and I have to be able to drill holes in it and mount it to a roof rack. And he was like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. Um, same with the drawer system, right? Like he was like, I'm building tables and desks and pantry shelves and things like that. And then I was like, hey, you want to build a semi-permanent but removable drawer system that was perfectly crafted to fit in the back of an Xterra? And he was like, 
yeah, let's, I want to do that. So um, definitely make friends with those people. Definitely, you know, find ways to get some talented people to help you. Um, because again, without him, I couldn't have done it, right? Like there's no way that I, my drawer would have fallen apart by now for sure if I had built it myself because I would have used like nails and plywood, right? And it would have been garbage. So huge thanks to Eric if he's watching or listening. Um, but definitely find those people. Those those talented people will help you out. Um you know, another resource that I lean on really heavily is Facebook groups. Like there are Facebook groups now for everybody. Like Facebook groups are the new forums, which is another thing you can look at. Forums have, still have great information, some great static content that just kind of like people put it up and then it just stays there. Um, so use forums as well. But if you want quick answers, if you run into problems, like people are on Facebook all the time and they will answer your questions really quick. And there are tons of people posting new content and talking about like ways they solve problems and ways that they're doing their own thing. That's really interesting. Um, so definitely check those out as well. And then of course, like, I mean, I'm on YouTube right now, right? I'm on podcasts, but YouTube is like a, such a good resource. Like for me, I am like, if I can see a thing and sort of follow step by step, then I can do almost anything. So like, I mean, I've done all kinds of car stuff and I'm not that mechanically inclined, but I've replaced leaf springs. I've done brakes. I've done, of course, oil changes and the regular maintenance stuff. Buddy and I once did, uh, (laughs) in one of my old infinities, we did a uh, transgo shift kit, which was terrifying where you drop the bottom of the transmission, you drain all the fluid out of it. You take your stock sort of membrane that comes out of the transmission. It looks like a brain and you drill holes in that to make it shift faster basically and put some different springs and balls in the transmission, put it all back together. And if you mess up, your transmission dies and you are out a transmission. Um, So that was terrifying. But again, with like YouTube videos and stuff, it's like play for four seconds, pause. Okay, we got that part. Take that thing off, move, put it over here, mark it. You know, like with YouTube, it's it's so nice. Like a ride the car guy for Xterra people, you're probably familiar with him. He does these great step-by-step videos, and it's just, if I have that, I can do almost anything. So definitely look at YouTube. Um, you know, it, it is, it's similar to planning trips. It's similar to all that stuff, but there's just so many good resources out there. And, you know, just try it. Like what's the worst that happens? Again, if, if you're going to go spend $2,500 on a, a bought rooftop tent, but you're not sure about it, what does it hurt to spend 200 bucks to try something, right? Like sure, maybe then you're out 2,700 bucks, but maybe the $200 solution is fantastic and you love it. Or maybe it's good enough to get you through a year and then in a year there's something better that's 1,500 bucks, you know? Um, so anyways, that's that's kind of the resources section. So and then the third part of this podcast slash vlog, execution, right? And I wanted to talk about this because it's sort of like when you're planning a trip, you know, you kind of start planning, you start your researching, like it's similar to planning a trip or planning a mod or plan. They're all kind of the same idea, right? You come up with the idea, you start to write stuff down, you start to really think through it. You think about the stuff you're going to need, the stuff you have to buy, the tools you need, that kind of stuff. So that is important, but the key is not to get analysis paralysis, right? So a lot of the times in the past, I would be like, I just don't know that I have the skills. I just don't know that how this is going to work. I just, I'm not sure that it's going to be worth that hundred bucks that I'm going to spend. And maybe it doesn't work. Right. And again, as I kind of mentioned previously, like if you're talking a hundred bucks versus a thousand bucks, again, sure. You could go buy that thing for a thousand bucks, but is there really any harm in spending that hundred bucks and trying it? And maybe 50% of the time works or even 25% of the time it works but you spend 10% of what you would have if you'd purchased a pre-existing solution. So maybe some of those fail, right? Like my rooftop tent, good example. I spent about 300 bucks on that. And then I ended up spending about a thousand bucks, 900 bucks plus tax on my purchased rooftop tent. But even with both of those things put together, again, I learned so much about woodworking and waterproofing and sewing and you know, everything. Like I learned a ton of stuff and I still only spent about 12 to 1300 bucks, which is the very low end of rooftop tent pricing, right? Um, So don't get so freaked out by it that you just refuse to like try it, right? Like don't just get so freaked out that you're like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to wait a year to buy a rooftop tent and I'm just going to save up. And again, nothing against that. There's That's smart, right? Like it is smart to, to be fiscally responsible and things like that. But if like for me, the DIY rooftop tent went, I probably used it for about six months or so. But so like even for the 300 bucks, like 50 bucks a month to be able to go camping and, and have this cool solution that's on top of the truck was, it was worth it, right? Um, so yeah, so definitely when it gets to execution, just do it, 
right? Like just try the things. What's the worst that happens? You, you lose a couple bucks, it's okay, right? Um, so, you know, use those opportunities to learn from those mistakes. Use those opportunities to learn skills that you could use then down the line to, again, save yourself money on things that you might spend more money on if you didn't make it yourself. Um, but don't be afraid to do it. So, you know, that kind of wraps this up. That that was kind of the episode. I wanted to just kind of touch on all those things because I have done now, I, I realize, I never really thought about it, but I've had people reach out to me and they're like, dude, you're the DIY guy. And I'm like, really? Um, I don't think of myself that way at all, but my being cheap combined with my wanting to have the stuff that I want, <laughs> I guess has made me into kind of a DIY guy. Um, again, there are better people out there than me. I'm, I will always be self-deprecating. I'm, I'm not at all trying to toot my own horn, but I am pretty proud of some of the stuff that I've made or designed and had someone else help me make. Um, and, and you can do it too, right? Like there is no reason that you can't just go out and make yourself a drawer system. I've seen tons of them recently on like Nissan Xterra Facebook group or, you know, DIY rooftop tent group, like these people are making some really cool stuff. Um, and they're just doing it. They're just trying it. So, you know, don't hesitate, get out there and do it. Enjoy yourself, learn something, make something cool, use it for as long as it makes sense and then improve, you know? So again, thank you guys for watching or listening. If you're listening on the podcast, um, down in the description below, of course, will be links to everything, Facebook, Instagram, the podcast. If you're on YouTube, YouTube, if you're on the podcast, Come and sub everywhere. Come and hang out. You know, I'd love to have you. There's also a link in the description below to the store. Uh, I'm not selling anything fancy or expensive, but I've got some really cool uh, 3D PVC patches. I've got some stickers. So, you know, if you want to support the channel, if you like the content, that definitely helps a lot. So thank you for that. Um, also, clicking like helps more than you guys think. And I hate to always, I always kind of hate to ask for that because I'm from the Midwest. So I'm just like, uh, I'm, I'm going to try. And people will like it if they like it. But, you know, honestly, if you guys click that like button, it does really help because it tells Google and YouTube, you know, hey, I like this content. It's good content. Show it to more people, right? Um, so, again, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, as always, I look forward to talking to you guys next week. There will be more great content coming. Um, so, yeah, hit me up in the comments. Subscribe on those other channels. Join the conversation. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Take care.